So it's just to mention a couple of things about um, impact and dissemination, uh, and maybe touch to touch upon some of the questions that have been asked already, and some of the ones that may be asked before um, later during the discussion. Now, so we have uh, training, as we said, uh, we've presented the open ILSA course, um, and then we have the different universities of the consortium uh, training as well, training. Um, Intra and interlingual re-speaking. This information is mostly about interlingual re-speaking or trans-speaking. So you can see there the languages that are being uh, dealt with by the different universities. Um, what was face-to-face -face may now very well turn into online or maybe in transition to turning into online teaching, with, which we have been doing as well at the University of Vigo. So, so this is, um, and it's similar sort of duration as well. We're looking at um, a semester mostly for interlingual re-speaking dealing with different languages um, and this is all happening at MA level yeah at, at master's level as opposed to BA level then we have we've been working in terms of impact on quality assessment uh, as you know we've been using the NER model for intralingual the NTR model for interlingual that's been included as part of the Canadian legislation the NER um, which means that now in Canada broadcasters have to assess their output um, so they, they need to have certified um, evaluators who use the NAM model to assess the output of every broadcaster in Canada mm, there's a recommendation that's been kind of doing the rounds lately by the United Nations uh, ITU unit recommending for remote captioning as well the use of, the, of this model for quality assessment and uh, different members of the consortium have been looking at um, analyzing the quality of re-speaking versus quality of automatic captions in different countries. More of this hopefully now when Carlo Igeni joins us as part of the panel because it's particularly relevant in terms of research um, that's, that's happening at the moment. Many broadcasters are actually considering the use of uh, fully automatic captions for example and this sort of um, assessments are becoming more and more relevant now as as is the issue of certification as well so uh, we have set up something called lyrics which is a certification of re-speakers on one hand um, and that would be re-speakers or trans speakers that is for intra or interlingual re-speaking and we're using as well lyrics um, to, to, to certify evaluators in Canada for example using the NAM model then uh, we're working, as I said before, with Global Alliance of speech to captioning in this case to uh, uh, introduce, it's kind of one of the few institutions in the US, if not the only one, which is method ag agnostic, so to speak, so covering for both steno and voice writing or re-speaking, um, and they're looking into coming out with a certification that can work for the different methods as well, so we've been collaborating with them. Um, they're very, very active then. In terms of professional practice, um, this is what we find particularly exciting because we have been in touch with several companies that are now looking for, well, now beginning to realize that there are there is such thing as interlingual re-speaking or trans-speaking, and they're looking for people who can do this. So we've been, we've been putting together a database of professionals who can deliver the service in different languages. And that's that's happening now, um, and we'd like this to be part of the conversation that we're having now, because in this panel we're going to have providers, but also professionals who are doing this even before um, any training was in place. Um, so we've been liaising with speech to text interpreter providers who are now considering the different options that they have at their disposal to be able to provide uh, live access or live translation, if you like. For events, um, we've been contacted by um, different people who needed business meetings to be um, translated live. Uh, the now, Assembly for Pres Presbyterian Church in the U.S. press conferences, not least sports press conferences, different types of talks and events, um, and the discussions are ongoing now, um, and uh, we're trying to kind of have these discussions not just with the providers but also with our very own trainees who are now professionals about rates and working conditions, um, technological challenges now that most of the work has turned on the, into online type of work. So what is going on with remote captioning at the moment? 
um, do the available platforms now, not just speech recognition, but the platforms that are used, do they allow for uh, one re-speaker to work, but maybe for several re-speakers or for a co-editor to work alo alongside the re-speaker? Um, do they add to the delay that is um, already there when you're doing re-speaking? All these questions we're trying to deal with. Um, we've been also collaborating with App a US company uh, that is working on speech recognition and we've come up with three blocks together on the state of live captioning, quality in live captioning and an infographic for the NAM model. It's basically a way of mainstreaming uh, and and putting, um, I don't know, a bit of a, a wider, uh, in, into a wider context, some of the work that we've been doing. And then of course there's the academic dissemination uh, and you're very welcome to uh, consult any of these sources.